Good morning, everybody. Uh, pastor Nate Borman here, one of the pastors at Mount Lebanon Lutheran Church here to share another devotional thought with you this morning. Uh, today, um, the section of scripture that this comes out of is Acts chapter 23. Um, I want to encourage you and invite you um, after you watch this, or maybe if you're watching this later on in the day or on another day altogether, you know, pause it right now and, and read Acts chapter 23. We are in, in the context of Acts. Um, Paul has gone back to Jerusalem. He's, he's now, he's been preaching there. He's now on trial there. The Jews have arrested him. They put him on trial. They're interrogating him, them. Paul is standing up and giving his testimony, um, but they're not having it. So that's the middle of the context. That starts in Acts chapter 22. It carries on through chapter 23. From this point on until the end of the book of Acts, Paul is under arrest. Um, it's, it's under arrest by the Romans, and eventually Paul is making his way um, to Rome where he'll testify before Caesar and share the gospel there, which is a really, really cool thing. Um, today, what I want you to think about, and maybe I'll, I'll even invite you to chat in if you're watching this live. Uh, I Maybe you know this about me already. I'm really fascinated in the Bible by the little words. Um, we, I think sometimes we think a lot about the big words like justification, which means uh, God declares us not guilty, or like sanctification. It's the life of holiness that we try to lead. Uh, we spend a lot of time, and there's good reason for that, on the big words. Uh, but sometimes it's the little words uh, that mean a lot. So what are some of the little words in the Bible that, that preach a pretty powerful sermon? As, you, as, you, as I talk, maybe think of some of, some of your own words. Uh, because there's a little word in Acts chapter 23, and I want to read to you verse 11. There's a little word, at least a little word in the Greek language, uh, that says an awful lot about Paul's life and actually teaches us a lot about ours. Uh, the, this is Ch Acts 23, verse 11. The following night the Lord stood near Paul and said, Take courage, as you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify in Rome. See, Paul's on trial. Um, the Jews, in the very next verse, the Jews are starting to make a plot to kill him. And what God is saying to Paul is, this has to happen. It's necessary. The, the little word in Greek, in the Greek language, it's, I won't be too dorky for you this morning, but the little word in the Greek language is, is spelled with a, in the Greek word, Greek letters, a D, an E, and an I, so a die. And in, in English, it's often translated with must or it is necessary. So what God's telling Paul is, this is a necessity. It is a necessity that you will testify in Rome. In other words, God is saying this about Paul's life, that, that Paul, and it's tremendously comforting when you think about it, when, when you're from Paul's perspective. He's arrested, he's on trial, um, the Jews want him dead, and God is saying, this must happen for your life. You must also testify about me, not just here in Jerusalem, but also in Rome. So, so God's laying down this divine necessity about Paul's life. Um, th and this little word, it is necessary, this must happen, it shows up again and again throughout the Bible. And, I, and each time it carries this t tremendous weight. Um, Jesus said this about his suffering, yes, it is necessary, it must happen for the Son of Man to be betrayed, to be delivered over into the hands of sinners, to be crucified, and then on the third day he must be raised to life. Uh, again, Jesus is saying this is a div divine necessity, this must happen. And, and in each time that, that little word, it occur, when it occurs in, in situations like that, it, it's really comforting. When, when Jesus says it is necessary for this to happen to the Son of Man, he's saying this is the way it must go down in order for the world of sinners to be saved. Right? He is saying not only that God has ordained this, that was what we talked about yesterday. It is, he's not just saying God has ordained this, but this must happen in order for salvation to be complete. So in that, um, there's comfort, there's huge comfort for you because God did what had to be done. God accomplished what had to be accomplished. God, Jesus finished what had to be finished. He did what needed to be done because for you, for me. So, so in this, there is also the, there's this divine necessity about Jesus' life that had happened this way for you. Um, and then there's that, that same thing about your life, that God, we don't always know what the divine necessity is. 
we don't necessarily know what the must is about our life. But, but I want to just share this, this thought with you. Um, and, it, and it comes out of this word, it is necessary, it must take place, that, that you can't screw it up. <laughs> um, and, and what I mean by that is not that you and I should go out into this world and, and be willy-nilly about our lives and try to do whatever we want. Um, but I, I, there's this tremendous load that we carry in our lives that if we do it wrong, um, and I'm not so much, when I say the word wrong, I'm not necessarily saying that we sin. There, that's certainly part of it. But sometimes in our life we're, play, we're, we're faced with two choices that are, that are good. Uh, should I go to the grocery store or should I go to Chick-fil-A for lunch? Um, should I eat out of the grocery or so, should I do DoorDash? Those are two choices that are good. Um, and somehow, sometimes, and those are trivial, tri trivial cho decisions, but sometimes in our lives we face decisions and we feel like the, the fate of the world, or at least the fate of our lives, depend on the choices that we make. And we feel like if I make this decision, it's going to screw something up. And that's why I say, I think it's important for us to know that we can't screw it up. Um, God has a plan and a purpose and a necessity. It must happen. Like That's what he told Paul. It must happen this way. You must also testify about me in Jerusalem. God has that same plan for your life and, and you can't screw it up. Um, when in your life you fall into sin and you make not just a bad decision or a wrong, you, you make a sinful decision and, and follow it up with a sinful action, you can't screw it up uh, because in that, uh, as you come to the Lord with your sin, He forgives it. Uh, he washes all your sins away and covers it with the blood of Jesus. Um, as you come to, your, to the Lord this morning and repent of your sins, you need to know this right off the bat. That, that he has forgiven your sins and separated it from you as far as the east is from the west. The blood of Jesus purifies you from every sin. And <laughs> your sin didn't ruin anything. I, I, maybe that sounds a little bit silly to say, but, but think throughout the history of the Bible when tremendous sinners did terrific and terrible sins and they didn't ruin anything. Peter denied Jesus. He denied that he knew him, but that didn't ruin anything. Um, Pilate, he, he condemned Jesus to death when Jesus had done nothing wrong, but he didn't ruin it. Judas betrayed Jesus and handed him over into the hands of sinners, but, but he didn't ruin it. Even through the worst of sins, and even through the worst of sinners, God still accomplishes his purpose, which means you can't screw it up. For your sin there is forgiveness and through your sin and and in spite of your sin God still accomplishes his purposes because you have to remember we we give ourselves way too much credit <laughs> for our lives we, we give ourselves way too credit for the, too much credit for the things that that, that that happen in our lives we we make decisions as if our actions made the difference um, and the reality is is God is God is king um, God is king and and his necessity his must uh, his divine necessity always lays upon our life. He's king um, in our decisions, in, our, in spite of our sins, in spite of our actions, in spite of our failures. God always accomplishes his purpose. And that's why I say to you this morning, you can't screw it up. Um, so go out, go out into this day and, and serve the Lord boldly, without fear. Uh, if you sin, confess it and move on because you didn't ruin anything. Repent of it. Make some resolutions to do better and, and move on. You didn't ruin it. Make decisions boldly and confidently today because you can't screw it up. Jesus is king, not you. And, and, and the joy and the privilege of this is that Jesus in your life has, has, has given you the opportunity and the Christian freedom to make choices about good things today. Um, go serve the Lord boldly today. If you, screw, if you sin, know this, you're forgiven. If you make if you make a, di a choice, you didn't screw it up because Jesus is King and, and He's His will, His plan for you, for your life, for the world will not change. Um, he's always going to carry it out. Have a great day, everybody. The Lord be with you all. If you haven't done it yet, I want to encourage you to read Acts 23 and see how how God is carrying out His divine plan and purpose in Paul's life. 
life. Have a great day. The Lord be with you all.